Welcome to my course uh, electrochemical energy storage and uh, this is module number 5 where I am describing the characteristics of commercial lithium ion cells and uh, this is lecture number 25. Uh, in this lecture I will describe the fabrication of uh, lithium ion pouch cell uh, and same principle is adopted to make prismatic cell as well. The difference between the cylindrical cell which I covered in the last lecture is the capacity is relatively low because of their size and here in the pouch cell you can get each individual cell can give you uh, say 35 ampere hour or 100 ampere hour kind of capacity. So, this is quite uh, important for you to um, see that how exactly they are fabricated. So, if you see um, the concept that is covered in this particular lecture is uh, um, the lithium ion battery is available in different formats. So, I have covered all the formats. If you uh, see the cell formats which is used uh, commercially, um, you know all the formats. So, pouch cell manufacturing process, again I will focus on the laboratory based process to make the pouch cell in our laboratory. In our IIT Kharagpur, we have the um, full range facility to make coin cell, to make uh, cylindrical cell and we are augmented our uh, lithium ion battery lab to make uh, the pouch cell also. Uh, so, pouch cell uh, also uh, after this pandemic, uh, we think that we will be able to uh, make pouch cell as well. So, we have the whole facilities. So, again this pouch cell manufacturing process that also have this electrode manufacturing process which includes the electrode slurry which is basically same as in case of cylindrical cell electrode coating then roll pressing, then slitting, slitting is slightly different here and vacuum drying process. And then there is a assembly process which is not winding, but it is some kind of stacking one after another it stacks to form the a flat kind of thing. And then tab welding is there and uh, there is something called cuff formation where this stack the so called jelly roll that is put there in and then there is uh, uh, the sealing, the vacuum sealing part after cathode welding. So, we will go step by step how exactly it is done. So, these are the different types of cell that you see in the market. Uh, although in your laptop you will see the battery is looks different, but it has several such cylindrical cell which is basically packed in a package. So, either it is cylindrical for small capacity application, you see this kind of lithium ion battery which we call button cell. Uh, we have cylindrical cell which is packed. Uh, you can have the um, pouch cell kind of thing in the prismatic configuration that we will find in your uh, mobile phone. So, if you take out the mobile phone battery, uh, one of such kind of thing, this is actually packed in a plastic cover and you will get a battery like this and this is fitted into your mobile phone. So, that is prismatic cell. Pulse cell is usually used for a heavy duty application in HEV or PHEV or electric vehicles uh, or uh, uh, some company they use cylindrical cell uh, that is there. So, uh, mixing of the slurry that is again the starting point. And um, you know that uh, uh, similar to cylindrical cell, so I, I will not repeat, repeat it. If you have a small batch, then this kind of machine you can use uh, where you can mix it uh, very uniformly uh, the slurry. And uh, this is the uh, YouTube video and probably the whole process of uh, the pouch cell manufacturing you can find it here. I am not sure you just click it and see probably I wanted to show you that uh, how the whole uh, process line uh, one uh, how it how all the individual equipment works. So, mixing, coating, pressing, slitting and vacuum drying same procedure is adopted here as well. Now, coating uh, here uh, is uh, same, but as you can see a different types of uh, 
uh, cutter is used here as compared to the cylindrical cell cutter and uh, you can see the slurry is stored somewhere here and the rolls are, rollers are here. So, this uh, uh, contains this uh, either aluminum or copper roll here and then they go through this and getting coated and wind in some other roller. So, it is a roll to roll kind of coating which is done inside this. Uh, so, this YouTube video again you will have to see and once you coat it then after that there is a hot roll press and this is just to increase the addition and increase the tap density of the battery that you are using. Uh, I mean the electrode that you are using. Uh, so, that process is also identical to the one for cylindrical cell. Then uh, instead of the slitting um, of a, of a um, rectangular kind of piece uh, for rolling, actually this uh, die cutter process uh, operation you can see it here. So, this die cutter process it takes this coated thing either coating on aluminum or it is coated on copper. So, you put the strip here and then you operate it electrically operate this thing and this is pneumatically controlled. So, it will just cut the uh, electrode something like this. So, two types of cutting is possible one for your negative electrode which is coated on copper and one for positive electrode which is coated on aluminum and then basically in between there will be separator and by the way they are coated in both the sides to increase the capacity. But see that this one and this one, uh, one is at the right hand side and another one is at the left hand side. So, when it will stack then you will have several this kind of spot welded uh, electrode uh, on anode and cathode, I will show it afterwards. But uh, this stacking machine which we call a jet stacking machine that is very important because in hand you cannot actually have separator in between and keep on putting this uh, uh, electrode one by one to build a bigger battery. Uh, so, that is basically done in an automatic machine. So, um, remember this anode uh, is having a copper tap and cathode is having a nickel tap. So, copper tap uh, is connected with the copper connect current collector and the nickel tap is connected through an aluminum current collector for the positive electrode material. Now, this is your stacking machine and we call it the jet stacking machine. Very recently we have acquired one, it is not yet installed because of this uh, pandemic in our laboratory, it is lying there in our lab. So, you can see that uh, this separator is there and you have two sets of uh, places where from it automatically picks up the anode at one end and cathode at one end. How it works? It is a very interesting video, if you click it you will see that how exactly it is um, stacked together. So, it is a high accuracy automatic stacking machine that is used for many advanced feature the, to ensure a stable and repeatable and precise electrode stacking, you cannot do it by hand. So, it is jet fashion stacking, so it increases like this in jet direction. Anode and cathode electrodes are alternatively stacked with a separator film there in between obviously. So, it is a continuous jet fashion stacking with separator, then auto electrode pickup as I was saying that you will have to just put this cut electrode, the die cut electrode uh, with copper and nickel tabbed uh, already put it there. Uh, it is all adjustable, so it is having a robotic hand to pick it up and stack. So, unrailing rotors for separator film fitting this uh, separator in between and the tension needs to be controlled. So, you have a PLC board you can program it what kind of tension you need, how many stacks are there, 
So, all it can be programmed and this will just keep on stacking one after another with the uh, with the separator therein. So, uh, this is uh, the situation after stacking is something like this you can see the whole things are uh, actually uh, stacked together and uh, then in so that it is not getting displaced you have this uh, uh, high temperature polymer tip though you wind it here so that uh, these are not uh, disassembled. So, then you will have to do a tab welding. So, in case of tab welding you can now imagine there are number of this nickel and copper tap that was coming from each electrode. So, everything should be uh, sealed together along with another tab which gets the connection from this multiple taps. So, this machine is very important and this is a tab welding machine and it is basically an ultrasonic metal welder that is uh, used for nickel and aluminum tab welding, copper also can be used. Uh, so, this video again you should see it is designed for welding nickel or aluminum tabs onto the stack electrode sheet with the current collectors of copper or aluminum and uh, that basically prepares the pouse cell. So, this pouse cell the heart of pouse cell is therein. Now, you will have to cover it. So, you need a special polymer coated aluminum uh, foil uh, you will have to cover it. So, you will have to seal this thing uh, inside uh, keeping this jelly roll inside to get the uh, pouse cell configuration. So, in order to do that uh, you will have to have a cup forming machine because you will have to give space uh, to this uh, uh, polymer coated aluminum thing. Uh, so, this cup forming machine what it does it exactly uh, forms this cup where this type of uh, stacked thing uh, they can be placed here. So, uh, the thing is that depending on the thickness of the stack you will have to uh, adjust the depth. So, again this video you will have to see. So, this cup forming machine is used to form a groove. Um, under aluminum laminated film we call it um, that is shown in this equipment here is a pressure pressure kind of uh, two platens are there. So, it press it uh, the model uh, may be slightly different uh, as shown in the figure uh, this one in the video it may be slightly different do not worry about it and the groove is made exactly having the same dimension of the stack. So, that it is exactly fitted and uh, the adjustable depth as I as I told spacer set, set is included in the standard package. So, that it is firmly gripped uh, uh, and you can have different stacked uh, stacked layer. And once you do the uh, stacking then uh, you know that all uh, ends are open all ends are open. So, you will have to seal it right. So, three sides are sealed. So, you can imagine a, a piece of paper and you have put something in and then you cover it. So, one side, second side, third side there are three sides they are open. So, two sides are sealed by this vacuum sealer. So, uh, this is a compact vacuum sealer and that is used for sealing the aluminum laminated pouch cell case. So, this is controlled dry box, it has temperature, pressure, duration control uh, everything there and you can control it is a good controller uh, temperature controller and pressure also can be controlled and this can be operated with this paddler. So, your two hands are free to, to do that. Uh, you can also operate it in argon and nitrogen ambient. So, that that is good for it. So, that once you are sealing there is no air that is there initially you put vacuum take all the air out and then fill it with nitrogen. For argon filling this is a slightly complicated kind of machine is used. So, this is called first stage sealing process. So, that it is sealed in uh, uh, two side. Uh, one side is already folded, but still you seal it on top of it 
do not believe on the folding part only. So, you seal uh, 1, 2, 3 side, 4 side is open, followed by second stage that is a semi final selling um, in a vacuum sealer. So, the second stage uh, sealing will also be there uh, after you put the electrolyte filling. So, electrolyte filling is done after uh, the first sealing and then once you put the electrolyte then using the same machine you can do the second sealing. Still we call it a semi final sealing, I will explain it why. So, after stage 2 sealing usually is done, then you do 3 charge discharge operation and that is your formation cycle. So, you, you know that there is no vent here and uh, during formation uh, most likely in almost all the instances some gas will come out and there will be a swelling of the pouch cell. You can see in, uh, in the internet there are, there are uh, this swelling is very common just like a pillow it will swell lot of uh, gas will come out from electrolyte, from uh, ACI layer formation, if you charge it during the forming cycle using a higher voltage, then uh, this problem will be there. So, there will be some kind of uh, swelling uh, always will take place. Then what you do is uh, you take a relatively bigger package, uh, you can see in the video they have, a, they have uh, cited this, they have shown it. So, you have slightly bigger package and uh, the place space which does not form this cup, inside the cup your stack is there. So, it the gas will form and the gas will fill the remaining part after swelling. So, you pierce it, so the gas come out, there is no vent in the pouch cell. So, the gas will come out and then you do the third stage that is the final vacuum selling. So, that there is no gas after the formation cycle a stable ACI layer forms and whatever gas forming we expect that this is over within 3 to 4 cycle as long as the cell is swelling. Once you take it out then the cell will not evolve more gaseous product it is assumed. So, then you seal and the extra part you can just cut with another machine you cut and you get the pouch cell. So, this is the uh, actual forming process that is adopted uh, and uh, a battery channel analyzer use to uh, see whether really you are getting depending on your calculation whether really you are getting the 35 ampere hour or 100 ampere hour whatever you have predicted and there is no swelling then, then it is fit for printing the company name, batch name and its capacity and voltage. So, this is the complete fabrication process that you are having to make the pouch cell, the link is there, if you click it you will see all individual process whatever I mentioned starting from the mixing of the slurry and after mixing you are coating operation then this die cutting then tap welding, then uh, all the other process sequentially you will see. So, uh, look at the website pouch cell preparation uh, and you need to learn the equipment specification and operation principle, uh, principle uh, to fabricate the pouch cell and that is your study material. The Parks book that also talked about it, but uh, uh, to less extent and uh, again the handbook of lithium uh, battery pack design that is uh, quite interesting. Uh, so, in this particular lecture, uh, we talked about uh, pouch cell manufacturing process and by mistake uh, you can see that this is uh, cylindrical cell manufacturing process is still there, this is a problem of cut and paste. So, this will be pouch cell manufacturing process, but the electrode manufacturing process remains same and that includes uh, the preparation of the slurry, very careful about the preparation of the slurry because the formation of bubbles uh, that is very detrimental 
um, because uh, the bubbles will burst during your tip casting and it will form a lot of pinholes and pinhole has uh, having a direct access to the current collector. So, we do not want that. So, viscosity if it is too thick then it creates problem and also any low boiling gaseous forming uh, material if there is there in the uh, in the in the mixing um, uh, the slurry preparation stage that is also detrimental. And then uh, you have electrode coating process. So, that coating process also I uh, described uh, the machine that is used for roll to roll coating process uh, or if you are going for a hand scale stacking kind of thing then the normal tip casting unit also can be used. Uh, in fact, in our laboratory we can make uh, the pouch cell, uh, but only thing is that whatever I told that you will have to do everything inside a globe box and if you have a small spot welder then you can make uh, individual cell uh, kind of cutting by a scissor and uh, then tab weld it and then stack it this uh, uh, cathode and anode together and then again another spot welder so that you can have the total battery and then you seal it and you have a laminator to uh, laminate it after the electrolyte filling. So, small pouch cell also one can make um, just uh, as a demonstration having little bit higher capacity that usually we do in our laboratory not with the uh, if we do not have when we did not have the access of this sophisticated uh, pouch cell equipment. So, this um, uh, roll processing, slitting process, vacuum drying process they are same. Then assembly process they include the stacking and stacking, tab welding they are very important. Then uh, another process cup forming so that your pouch cell looks uh, quite good after this cup formation and then you do the vacuum sealing part and uh, uh, vacuum sealing is usually done in three stage. Uh, first and second stage and after that uh, you do the forming cycle and forming cycle whatever gases etcetera is present. So, that uh, goes out uh, and uh, it is uh, there inside the pouch and you pierce the pouch and then again you seal it and you get your pouch cell uh, in the process. So, thank you for your attention.